Did you know you can completely remove layer lines from a 3D print? And did you know that you can easily embed objects into your 3D prints? And even cooler, you can have it completely fused together. And did you know there's a somewhat cursed way to automate your 3D printer? In this video, I'll show you five 1000 IQ 3D printing tricks you need to know. First, we have those pesky layer lines. Not only do they make an object look like a cheap 3D printed part, but 3D printed parts also commonly break along the layer lines. So what's the trick to solve this? And you're probably not going to guess it, but it's salt. And not just a little bit of salt, it's a lot of salt. The process is called salt annealing. Basically, you take a 3D printed object, like this angle bracket printed out of transparent PETG. Basically, what you do is you take the object and you embed it into the salt. And I'm using extra fine popcorn salt. Simply bake it in the oven at your own risk at around 200 degrees Celsius. To oversimplify it, you basically want the plastic to melt and the salt will hold it in place and all the molecules will fuse together. So here it is after about an hour in the oven. And it's also been cooling for about another hour after that. And the salt is still really hot. What I don't want to happen is the part to still be too hot and warp or bend. It feels pretty solid, so I think we'll be good. Oh wow, that looks really nice actually. It's got like a really granular texture and it doesn't look 3D printed at all. Okay, and it's not really hot to touch either. Wow, didn't really know salt annealing would be that easy. The benefits of salt annealing are pretty simple and straightforward. Instead of having an anisotropic material where it's weaker in one direction on the layer line, we now have a homogeneous part that's consistently strong throughout. We basically get the entire full strength of the plastic material. For our next 1000 IQ 3D printing trick, we have a really cool way of embedding parts into a 3D print. Basically, when designing the part, we need to build a sacrificial support tower. The 3D print basically looks like this. We have the breakaway support tower and the screw head. So here's the secret to embedding the part into the print. What you want to do is you want to have the printer pause at a certain layer height. Now you simply take the part that you want to embed into the object, place it into the 3D print and continue the print. Now the 3D printer will encapsulate the foreign object into to the print. But let's go ahead and take it one step further. Because we had to add extra clearance and tolerances to allow the part to easily fit into the 3D printed part, the encapsulated object is a little bit loose. To fix this, we could use salt annealing to basically fuse the plastic to the metal object. This next trick is another solution to those pesky layer lines. With a good 3D printer and good filament, you could actually get some pretty strong layer adhesion. But of course, it's still a 3D print and prints are weak along layer lines. So here's the 1000 IQ trick. Instead of 3D printing the object like this, we could split it in half and lay it down like so. Now, the layer lines are going in a better direction and all we have to do to assemble the part is just fold it in half like this and take our threaded ring here and screw it on tight. Now we have a really nice solid part that doesn't have any layer line weakness. And while it may not look quite as good as the part printed in one piece, it is definitely much, much stronger. Now let's go ahead and move on to the last 1000 IQ 3D printing trick. We're going to start by cutting a rectangular shaped hole in my workbench. The size needs to be a little bit smaller than the size of the printer. Now this is where it gets ridiculous. Go ahead and take the printer and place it upside down over the hole. Now hang with me here. I know this is crazy and I actually don't recommend doing this, but it's kind of clever and it actually works. This is an automatic print fulfillment hack. Basically because the 3D printer is upside down, the print will self release from the build plate and fall into the bin below. It even solves the purge problem. You always have to make sure the first layer is adhering good and this is looking great. So let's go ahead and see it in action. You also get the added benefit of being able to print really long and top heavy objects. And when the print is done, it self releases. How ridiculously cool is that? My name is Steven. Thanks for watching and happy printing.